everyone, I'm Dr. Tekjun Sider and today we're gonna go over how I did this opportunities and constraint diagram for my major project. What I analyzed and how and why. People normally ask me when you do site analysis, how do you know what to analyze and how does it help your project? In this video I will go over why and what I have analyzed and how it helped my design. Don't forget to watch my previous video on how to enter the giveaway to, to receive a free portfolio done by me for you. So make sure to check out that video, it will be linked in the cards and the description will be down below. The winner will be announced on my next video, so stay tuned, you don't have a lot of time. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. One of the first things I did is I went to get my CAD drawing of the actual project, which you can see here. It's just nice black and white lines. I removed anything that's unnecessary. And you can get this by using Digimap or CAD Mapper, which I've shown you, which I've shown in previous videos. So make sure you watch those. One of the first things I did is I went and highlighted my buildings in gray. Then I went on and highlighted the major roads. I didn't highlight every single road just because and like every single path just because like it's a bit much. So just the major roads are what's important. I then went to get a Google Maps image. I, I made sure that I hit the label so there's no text. And then I just used the snipping tool that we all have and just I just cut out an area of the model. And I will use this to show some of, some of the green spaces and some of the road textures rather than doing all of it myself. Google has already done it for you. So I just highlighted where the strip of my building is only because there's no point showing the whole context in full opacity. So after selecting all of the areas, I copied it and duplicated the slide and lowered the opacity so that you have the lower opacity of the other context and your actual building and your site is in full opacity. Obviously, once again, I lowered opacity on both of them just to make sure that it doesn't pop out too much because I'm going to add text and icons and stuff. So for the actual icons, what I did is I you, I found this image on Pinterest, which you can find most of them. It's just make sure that you have a key at the end, which has all of your icons and what they mean. So I'm first going to highlight some of the trees and the areas. The reason why I have highlighted trees is so that it helps with the views and the existing landscaping. So you're showing how the, the site is currently with all of the trees and what kind of views and the vistas to the trees and vegetation. And then you're also showing how you can use that to your advantage using, you know, for solar shading and all these kinds of things. So after duplicating all of them, I grouped them in the same uh, folder. And then I also lowered the opacity because it was a bit dark. So I am now going over to, to adding uh, vehicle roads. So you just copy those icons for the vehicle roads and you just show the roads and which direction they go. Um, this helped me because I know the existing road access. So I know, okay, I can have a construction entrance from here. This is the entrance of the side, the exit, because you don't want to put an entrance or an exit where there, where there is no major vehicle access. I then went and added the rest of the icons, which is the pedestrian paths. Again, this would help me to encourage walking to the site and how you would enter uh, like secondary entrances of the site. I didn't do this everywhere because it would just be unnecessary and it's self-explanatory where there's walking paths. But I did them in the main, main areas next to the site and around the site, but not in the whole context because that's just a waste of time. I then went and added the noise diagrams. Once again, these noise diagrams will help me understand on uh, if I should add more noise ca noise cancelling features, which is just trees, scrubs, uh, a fence, or something like that, to reduce the noise pollution coming into the actual site. 
So one of the main features on the site is the canal. And so I just selected the canal using the magic wand tool and I made it a light blue. I made sure that the blue isn't too dark so it doesn't stand out too much from the actual site so that this light blue it blends in with the neutral black and white colors. So one of the other things I added were these little arrows. So these little arrows, they're like connections that I want to bring from the side. So you've got this arrow at the bottom, which means that I want to connect the land with the water so that you have some sort of water feature coming into the site. And again, from the top is that connecting the hospital um, to the site because it's a Maggi center. So it's going to be like hospital related. So I didn't want that to be like a physical connection to the hospital but i wanted that to be like a natural a natural connection to the site and to the hospital so so you can see what i'm what i'm typing I, so i typed uh, more privacy now i did this so that like i said before i wanted that to be a connection but not a physical connection i still wanted you to have this sense that you're not in a hospital you're just uh, in a facility of a hospital rather than the actual hospital and then I added the text for, like I said, connecting water and land. So the text, I thought that it'll be nice if it's in white, uh, you know, just something so that it pops out. I did think that the white, it wasn't too too readable properly. So what I did is I went to the, the effects, effects menu and added a black stroke. Now the stroke had to be quite thin because there's a lot of text. So I do think that it looks much better now and it's much more readable. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight possible locations for my building and all these kind of stuff. So after, so after showing all of the existing features and some of the connections that I want, I'm going to go into the actual site and think about where I can add connections or possible locations for the building and more features. So I'm highlighting this area on the left, which is where all of the existing trees are. And I'm just going to add a, a, a diagonal fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a pattern fill. This pattern fill is already in the existing uh, Photoshop, so you never have to change it. And then I'm just going to change the style of it and change it. Uh, this will then remove the actual white background of it rather than me having to click on it myself. And then I'm just going to add a white stroke on it uh, just to make it a bit more clear. And I'm going to delete the areas how, when it overlaps on the trees. So this area, it's mainly to show a possible communal garden for the, for the residents that are going to stay in this place. So I'm then adding another fill on the right, which once again, this fill is like a, uh, like boxes. And this is again on, on, the, on your default Photoshop um, fill menu. So once again, I did the same layer style. Now this area is going to be my possible building location. And I added it here because it's in the center of the site. So it's more radial and it's close to the water. Like it has a lot of privacy, which is what I talked about earlier, surrounded by these existing trees. And I'm going to possibly add more trees around it. So I think that this is one of the best locations for the actual building to go to. This opportunity constraint diagram is not a site analysis. The difference from a site analysis and opportunities constraint diagram is you're showing the opportunities that you can that you have for the site, how you can add connections to the water, add more privacy, pedestrian access, you know, vehicle access, all this kind of stuff. And then you've got your constraints which are like, okay, there's road noise here, so what can I do to defend that? How can I re reduce the noise level and all these kind of things. So these are things you need to think about with your site analysis so that when you talk about your building, you have a factual analysis on your building to say this goes here and this goes there with the, with the reason behind everything you say. Because when you do presentations, you don't want them to ask lots of questions. So you need to explain everything properly so that you reduce the amount of questions they ask at the end of your presentation. Let me know what you guys think of this opportunity constraint diagram. It has this minimal look, which I kind of like, and it has a few bright colors, which just makes it pop out a bit more. Let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, if you like the tutorial, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to join the giveaway to win a chance of a free portfolio. So take care. I'll see you soon, everyone, and stay safe.